Welcome to this module on uh, DC to DC converters. Uh, we will begin with uh, applications. Uh, we will classify these uh, DC to DC converters. We will look at uh, their applications in uh, AC synthesis and uh, then we will talk about basic concepts in uh, DC steady state. So when it comes to applications of DC or DC converters, uh, they certainly are used wherever either the DC is an input or an output. So photovoltaic systems or uh, uh, you know converters for electric and electric hybrid vehicles would be uh, well uh, would be an application uh, indirectly or directly and then in switch mode regulated DC uh, power supplies. So let's uh, classify these uh, DC or DC converters. Uh, they are non-isolated DC or DC converters where there is no electrical isolation between the input and the output and uh, these are listed here, buck, boost and buck boost and they are isolated DC converters which are really uh, derived from these non-isolated converters, but there is an electrical isolation there, and uh, these are commonly called fly the common types are flyback, forward, half, and full bridge. And like I mentioned, uh, there are applications of uh, uh, DC or DC converter ideas in implementing AC voltage synthesis. For example, here is a a basic building block, uh, a switch that uh, we power, which makes up this uh, switching power pole, and this switch could be made up of a buck and a boost in parallel, as shown here. So that will be talked about in module where we discuss AC synthesis. Uh, before we look at uh, uh, this basic building block used in these DC or DC converters, uh, we should justify that uh, these switches and diodes can be treated as ideal. And uh, the reason why we can do that is that uh, we are looking for very high converter efficiencies, 90%, uh, 95%, and even higher if you can get it. And uh, therefore, there has to be very low on state voltage drop across these devices. Similarly, there should be as little switching loss as possible. So these two combined, uh, you know, they, they, you know, if you choose the devices appropriately, uh, it is okay to justify for anal analysis purposes uh, to treat them as ideal. But uh, when it comes to actual converter design, we must take into account uh, the characteristics of these devices and the, the losses that they have in them. So let's look at uh, uh, this uh, switching power pole uh, made up of a transistor and a diode here. And you can see here uh, uh, what the voltage across this inductor would be and the current through this uh, inductor when this uh, power pole is switching. We will discuss this in a little more detail here. So let's uh, look at the characteristic in uh, DC steady state where uh, things are switching, but uh, overall uh, you can say it's in DC steady state. So what does that mean? What that means is that in this uh, uh, DC steady state, the current when the transistor turns on is starting at this uh, uh, level and uh, then uh, transistor turns off over here and it turns back on after one switching time P at T sub S. So these two levels are the same. So that's what is implied by, uh, in, by a DC steady state where these waveforms repeat with the time P at T sub S. Uh, <clears throat> so to discuss this steady state a little more in detail, We'll uh, put this capacitor and the load over here and let's see what happens. So uh, what we, we see here is that in, in DC steady state, maybe we should add this thing here, uh, the average voltage across an inductor 
is zero. So uh, this is what we want to show, that the average voltage across an inductor is zero. So if you take this inductor here, and the current here is I sub L, the voltage is V sub L over here. So we have this equation here. And we can see uh, from the, the previous condition that we discussed that in a DC sta steady state, the waveform uh, repeats with switching time period. So if you integrate uh, uh, from uh, the beginning to the end of the switching time period, and we'll see that the integral is equal to zero. So if we express this equation in the integral form, uh, we can say that uh, the integral of this voltage over a time period from zero to Ts is zero by rewriting this equation in an integral form here. And uh, so if we take this part and divide it by the switching time period Ts, that is the average inductor voltage, and that is equal to zero. So that is really the bottom line, that the average voltage across an inductor is zero in DC steady state. <clears throat> and that is shown uh, again in this uh, slide here. Uh, it's showing is that uh, if we had uh, this, this situation here uh, and a constant voltage here, VO, let's say, then uh, the voltage across this inductor is plotted here, and this area here is uh, equal in mag magnitude, but uh, negative or uh, opposite in, in polarity. So the average inductor voltage then is equal to this area A, which is positive, area B, which is negative, and the sum of these two is zero. Therefore, the average inductor voltage is zero. Uh, same thing for the current through a capacitor here. If this is the current I sub C, this is the voltage V sub C across this capacitor. Uh, then uh, we can write this equation here. And uh, uh, since the, the, the waveform would repeat with every switching time period, if you integrate the, the capacitor voltage, from VC0 to VC at the end of the switching time period, uh, that is equal to zero. And then if you rewrite this equation it's in its integral form, uh, you can see that uh, the, the integral of this uh, current is equal to zero. And if you divide this by T sub S, which is the switching time period, that's the average uh, capacitor current, which turns out to be zero. So what this uh, slide is showing is that in DC steady state, the average current through a capacitor is zero, the average current. Uh, similarly, uh, we can say that in DC steady state, uh, of course, this is the Kirchhoff's uh, uh, current law at any node, and it'll also be true for average quantities. And similarly, this is the Kirchhoff's voltage law for instantaneous quantities and that will be valid for average quantities as well. So the, these uh, basic concepts are very helpful in analyzing uh, these uh, converter circuits. So here is a simulation of a uh, uh, buck converter, basically a switching power pole here, implemented in this fashion. And uh, in this uh, piece by simulation, uh, the voltage across here is shown as a pulse, and uh, then the rest of the circuit is modeled here, and uh, we will look at uh, various waveforms in this simulation. If you look at the voltage at the output of this uh, switching power pole, that is at the current port, the voltage, that is shown in green, and its average value is shown in, in red over here. So this... Uh, average value for this green waveform is pretty much equal to the output uh, that shows up uh, at the end of this, at the output of this uh, converter here. And if we, we can also do in piece spice uh, Fourier analysis of this voltage VA. It has this uh, DC value over here, and then you can see that uh, it has all the other, uh, it has switching frequencies and its components. 
uh, so are its uh, multiples, I should say, switching frequency and its multiples. So the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz, so it shows what the, the amplitude here is at that frequency, and uh, then uh, at its multiples, other amplitudes are shown as well. Then we, the Fourier analysis of the output voltage is done here. It shows that it has this DC average value here, and then uh, the, this, uh, the amplitudes at the switching frequency and its multiples uh, are attenuated very significantly. So you can see these are very small values here. For example, at 100 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz, and so on. <clears throat> and if you look at the currents here, uh, again, the same simulation, this current IL, this current IR, and this current IC, and those are plotted here, and as zero is over here, uh, you can see that uh, uh, IR is pretty much a constant current because the voltage across this capacitor is uh, fairly uh, constant DC, and so IR is a fairly smooth current, and then this IL uh, is uh, going up when the transistor is on, when the pulse is high, and it's going down when the transistor is off, and this current is freewheeling through this diode, and therefore the voltage is zero here. So uh, we see this IL, and it has an average value, which is uh, the average of this is equal to this, uh, because the average current through the capacitor here is zero. So basically the ripple in this inductor current then flows through the capacitor, which is plotted over here. Uh, <clears throat> you can also do a frequency analysis in uh, P-SPICE, where we can uh, perhaps put a uh, voltage source, AC voltage source of uh, uh, amplitude 1, and we, we can vary its frequency and uh, look at uh, uh, what's going on. So here we are plotting the, uh, the output voltage uh, as a function of frequency. Uh, well, I think we are plotting uh, here uh, what uh, the filter filter is doing essentially, and it's showing is that uh, uh, you know the in the output here the the ripple at high frequency uh, is not showing up here, and uh, it is being greatly attenuated here. And so, in summary, uh, what we have here is. Uh, uh, discussion over DC to DC converter, its applications, its classifications, and its application is in AC voltage synthesis and basic concepts in DC steady state. So thank you very much.